So you do want to keep in mind that it's a two-day processing time from the time that you have completed paperwork. So if you have any questions, you do want to call and let us know. We do also have instructional videos that help you completing the entire forms. But for whatever reason, we want to let you know that we're available to you. Um, as long as you're calling within business hours, we'll be able to contact you immediately. Yes, sorry, answer the phone immediately. Okay, so next, when the offer is accepted and you are able to actually invest within yourself, Dr. Naira, you have a house, congrats, woo, we have a, a contract in place. Um, the account holder completes the real estate purchase kit. And what this is, is a packet of a few documents where it's about um, six pages long, where you get to tell us all the details on the property. Why you wanna do that is so that we know exactly what you're investing in, who we're sending funds to, who, who your realtor is, your title company, your attorney, whomever you're using, you get to tell us all the information within that purchase kit. We have step-by-step um, -step tutorials on how to fill out every one of our forms. So once you have this all done, it could be after business hours, you can fill it out, or during business hours if you need help, um, we can help you through the process. And then a, um, the account holder, so you, would sign as read and approved on every single page, every document from the title company or escrow agent so that we can sign on behalf of your IRA. So this is that part where you are about to purchase the property, the paperwork is getting processed, and we are signing on behalf of your IRA because if we go back to the previous slide, it talks about how Mountain, you're filling out the um, offer in the name of the IRA. So you're, you are purchasing the property in the name of your IRA. You are not able to sign on behalf of your IRA. Instead, we need to sign on behalf of your IRA, but we will not sign the documents unless you sign as read and approved, making sure you read the fine print, all the details within the contract so that we can make sure that you have chose this asset because we don't, we don't have assets to sell. And then next, the title company or escrow agent sends those read and approved documents, so signed literally read and approved documents to us who we will then sign on behalf of your IRA. And then once the uh, property has closed, then, uh, oh, sorry, the, the, the rental or lease agreements are transferred to any existing um, servicing. If you have like servicing of any rental or leasing Contracts that are going on, this is the part, if you have them this early in the process, some people do, some people don't. Um, and then that's made between the IRA and the servicer. You, of course, will choose that um, servicer, you'll choose uh, the payment methods, everything that has to do, you choose that. We are just here to help on behalf of your IRA and sign the documents. And then at that time, now we're ready for close and Mountain West IRA will then send the funds to the escrow account on behalf of your IRA, and then the deed is recorded in the name of um, the account holder, so yours, F Mountain West IRA, FBO, your name, and it is sent to Mountain West IRA if paid in cash. If it is not paid in cash, then you will, um, you can have a loan on it, and you can work with a non-recourse loan. We will have a non-recourse lender on here at one point to talk about how you can leverage property. This one, we're just going to do cash as the example. So the deed is then sent to Mountain West and kept for safekeeping. And all income is paid to the IRA, <laughs> to the IRA. And then any expenses are paid from the IRA in direct proportion to ownership, which we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but the what the income is, is all those rental payments. Um, if you happen to rehab a property, then the payoff would come into the IRA. If you have um, a lease option, any of that money would come into the IRA. Or if it happens to be a wholesale deal one, because the IRS could look at that as a business, um, that money would then come into the IRA tax deferred or tax free forever. This rental income is actually the, the dividend for your asset. So just like a stock were to pay out a dividend, either monthly, quarterly, uh, every six months or annually, the rental income is a dividend for your retirement account. So you are actually able to get this money tax free or tax deferred. And that is how you get the, the, the IRA actually owns the property. And because the IRA owns the property, the rental income comes back to the IRA as the dividend. And then any expenses that are paid from the IRA. So if there's a water bill or um, trash, a new roof, a new a fence, whatever it is that needs to be covered, 
by the IRA, because the IRA owns it, the IRA will have to pay those expenses and then any income comes back to the IRA to fill that back up. Bianca, did you want to chime in? Yes, I just want to um, go over something that I know some clients uh, have some confusion about or some questions. So you really want to pay attention to the direct lineage of ownership of through an account um, versus your asset. So you as a client, you employ Mountain West IRA. So you have the opportunity to pay any of our fees by a check, by a card, or from your account funds. But your IRA is the owner of that real estate asset. So you can't just pay your light bill or a mortgage bill with your credit card. That's something that you do not want to do. Since you do not own that asset, your IRA does. The IRA must pay any kind of debts or bills, expenses from your IRA funds. Similar to how the dividends come back, any kind of funds that are needed for that asset for the maintenance must be paid with your account funds. I just want to make sure that's very clear that you can't perform any kind of sweat equity. You can't put any of your own dollars into that account. 